Hello, this is a virtual pathology specimen of a case of gynecomastia, which is a benign lesion involving the male breast. So we see here a nodule that has been excised and we are looking at the cut surface. Let me turn this around. Here we can see that it is relatively well circumscribed and here again is the cut surface. The reason for this discoloration is because there is some degradation of the fatty tissue. Let's take a closer look at the cut surface. We can see that there is some degree of variation in colour. We have whitish areas which show the fibrous tissue and breast parenchyma. And then we have some yellowish areas which represent fatty tissue. And over here is fatty tissue showing some degradative changes. Let's learn a bit more about gynecomastia. This is a benign condition of the male breast. It is very common, being the commonest lesion in the male breast and even affects up to 60% of men. Interestingly, there is a trimodal age distribution, one in infancy, one at puberty, and one in the older age group. Gynecomastia is due to hormonal imbalance, for example, a relative increase in estrogens over androgen levels, and it can be physiologic. For example, in infancy, it is due to maternal estrogen exposure, and then it will spontaneously resolve. It can also be seen in systemic illnesses, for example, in cirrhosis, because the metabolism of estrogen is affected and also some syndromes, for example, Kleinfelter and androgen insensitivity syndrome. In addition, certain tumours, for example, adrenocortical or lung tumours, can sometimes produce estrogens, giving rise to gynecomastia. And finally, drugs such as anabolic steroids can also cause this pathology. Clinically, this is more often bilateral, however, it can sometimes be unilateral, and there is usually associated pain, so there may be a retro areolar tender or painful lump, and sometimes the pain is more diffuse, and this is known as mastalgia. Gynecomastia also may occasionally regress spontaneously. It can be treated with medical treatment, for example, anti-estrogen medication, and sometimes in recalcitrant cases, excision is indicated. However, it should be noted that if the underlying cause is not treated, it can recur. Grossly, there is usually a soft to sometimes firm nodule or mass, and this lesion is usually subareolar in location. Sometimes it is rather ill-defined. So here is an example of serial sections taken from a more fresh case. And we can see that there are areas of whitish or collagenous stroma mixed with yellowish fatty areas. This picture, as well as the virtual pathology specimen, is taken from PathWeb, which is our free online pathology resource. Uh, you can register for free. The link is in the video description, or you can scan this QR code. And as for microscopy, there is a separate video demonstrating virtual microscopy of gynecomastia, but very briefly, this usually shows increased ducts, as you can see here, increased duct profiles, but interestingly, they do not come with accompanying lobules. So this is often known as ducts without lobules, and the stroma is usually quite fibrous. Just a recap of the female breast showing normal lobules. You can see these as sinar structures, like small tubular structures, and these collectively form a lobule with the intralobular stroma. So in the female breast, you see ducts and lobules. However, in gynecomastia, we see mostly only ducts. In summary, this is an example of a virtual pathology specimen of gynecomastia, which is a benign lesion in the male breast. And in this particular case, we see a well-circumscribed ovoid nodule with whitish fibrous areas intermixed with yellowish fatty areas. Again, this virtual pathology specimen is fully annotated and interactive, and this is taken from PathWeb, our free online pathology resource. If you scroll down, you will see more information including annotated photographs of cross and microscopic pictures, as well as talking pots and slides. 
and the registration link can be found in the video description. Thank you.